Hello, this is Kevin Bowersox, created the blog Two Thought. In today's tutorial, we're going to explore how we can persist objects that take advantage of inheritance. Inheritance allows us to define an is a relationship uh, between objects. Today's post will utilize the code that was created in our last post, JPA ordering collections with order by. Um, if you visit the blog, you can click on the GitHub icon below the post, and you can download the source code from which we will start today, uh, so you can follow along. So let's begin. To start, we'll head into STS, and we'll look at our entities. And you'll notice in our object model, we have a post. Um, it has a few fields on it. What we're going to do is create a new object, and it will be an abstract class. We're just going to call it abstract post. And we're going to create one more class, and we'll call that content post. So we have three posts. We have the abstract post, the regular post, and the content post. And in the content post, my idea is that we will have a content URL within this class. Um, that's how it will differ from a regular post. So I'm just generating getters and setters for that field I just added. Now let's begin making our abstract post. The idea behind this is that a content post and a post will share several fields and they will be contained in the abstract class from which they will both inherit. So I'm going to head into post first and I'm going to copy all the fields that don't create a relationship and I will put them into the abstract post and I'm going to change the access to these fields to protected that way each um, child of abstract post can reference the fields within it I'm creating getters and setters for each one of these and we've constructed our abstract class now. We just need to add one last thing to it for JPA, and that's mapped super class. Um, you'll notice in that annotation, uh, the C is lowercase. That tricked me up earlier. Um, so this is what we use to define an abstract class within JPA. So now I'll head back into post and I'll remove those fields and we're going to get some issues now. So let's remove the getters and setters which no longer have their fields that they reference. And we'll save that and we'll save the abstract post. And let's see what the problem is here. It's saying it can't find those fields. It should. Ah, <laughs> we have not inherited yet from the abstract post. So we'll establish the inheritance relationship between um, post and abstract post and now the content post will extend the abstract post and if we look at the content post we'll notice we don't have any JPA annotations on it so give it the entity annotation the table annotation and I'm actually just going to point to the same table post so this is kind of interesting. We, we're going to have two entities, if we look at post, that reference the post table. 
and now I need to add a column annotation to the content post and we'll head over to my SQL and look at post just to make sure that we add the content it's actually content URL field so I'm going to double check that so that's our table that we're writing to with both both the regular post and the content post and the only difference is that the content post will fill in the content URL while the regular post will not and now I'm going to double check get the content URL good so we had that um, column uh, annotated on our class with the appropriate field okay now since we're using spring data we will need to create the interface for the repository so I'm going to create a new interface and content post repository and we'll extend the JPA repository we'll specify the type and the type of the ID and remember the ID is contained within the abstract class at this point which we're extending in content post. Uh, we'll import content post into the repository and now we're ready to test so I'm going to head over to our test package and I'm going to cheat and just copy the post repository class and I'm going to just test both within this so abstract post repository test and we'll open that up and the first thing we'll need to do is add a content post repository and I'm going to call that C repository and I'll import that um, I'm going to change the name of the post repository to P repository just so we can keep them straight. And then I'm just going to remove what was left of the post test. And now we're ready to write our test methods. So I'm going to write two tests. The first one will test the insert of a regular post. So the first thing we'll do is create a post and we'll set its title I'm going to abstract that to a local variable and remember the post also has post parts so we'll import that and we'll set the body and the post part Whoops. and now we'll set the post part in the post and we'll also set the post in the post part so we keep our bidirectional relationship intact and let's see is there anything else we should set this should be fine so let's grab our post repository we'll save the post and now I'm gonna pull it from the database using the repository I'll pull it by ID and now we'll use our JUnit assertions. We'll make sure it's not null and we'll check that title field. Okay. 
Okay. Pull in J unit there. And now while we're at it, we're going to create another test. And this will be insert content post. So now we're going to test the other entity to make sure that we can persist it uh, through the mapped super class uh, using inheritance. So now we need to create a content post. Oops. So we'll import the content post and we'll set the content URL. Okay. And I'm also going to abstract that to a local variable. And now we'll use our, whoops, our content post repository to save it. And now we'll pull it back out from the database. using its ID and while we're doing this let's also set the title just so we can distinguish between them easily in the database um, so we're going to check with JUnit that it's not null and now we're going to assert that we have the correct post by looking at its URL. Okay, everything saves there. Let's run our test. We'll see if we have any errors. If we do, we'll resolve them. Okay, so it looks like everything worked according to JUnit. Let's go to MySQL and we can check our post table. So we have two posts. This is the regular post. This is the content post. Uh, we see the content UR was, URL was specified for the content post. So everything worked out. Let's quickly review what we covered today. So we wanted to have um, an inheritance relationship within our object model. And that relationship would be between the abstract post and the content post, as well as the abstract post and the regular post. That creates an issue because we're using JPA and we need to be able to persist that inheritance relationship. So we created the abstract post, which has fields similar to both of the other entities, content post and the regular post. And we annotated those with our JPA annotations. We made sure we had getters and setters for them. And then we simply added this mapped superclass annotation which allows JPA to pick up these fields when it persists, these fields and mappings. Um, then within our post class we extended the abstract post which is annotated. Now we removed the fields that are common to both objects and then in the content post we added its unique field which is content URL you know if it didn't have anything unique about it we'd really have to question why we're using inheritance um, and we also mapped the content post to the same table as the regular post 
and we gave it an entity annotation. So that wraps up today's tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Um, until we meet again.